So we're going to have a look at, guys, now, um, what are the expectations for a proper lab report when you hand it in in high school? All right. Uh, I just posted it in Google Classroom. So if you go to Google Classroom, it'll be in the Class Work tab. Okay, so if we go here, okay, say Class Work, and you can see Lab Report Expectations is in there now. Right? If you click on that, there's a PDF that you can follow along. It's basically what's on the board here. So what I'm saying is don't try to copy down everything that's on the board because it's right here. Okay, and you can access it anytime you want. You might want to make little notes to yourself on a piece of paper as we go along. That's fine. Okay, but what I have on the board it is here. Right, and uh, you'll have a hard time keeping up if you're trying to write it all down as I go through it. So Antoine Lavoisier and Roger Bacon were the two guys we talked about who essentially developed the scientific method. So the scientific method is what we follow anytime we do an experiment. We have a problem that the experiment is designed to solve or to study or gather data on. Okay? Because the end the end result or the you know the goal of an experiment isn't always to prove something. Sometimes it's to investigate something. Sometimes it's just to collect data. Right? So we have a problem we're investigating, and then we have a hypothesis about that problem. So anytime you get a lab report, for, or sorry, a lab that we're going to do in my class, okay, you will get a Google Doc that has basically just the skeleton of this. So it'll say problem, and then it'll be blank. Okay? It'll say a design, and it'll be blank, and then there'll be a hypothesis, and it'll be blank. It's just the skeleton of it you're going to fill it in so every time we do a lab you're going to have that document that you're going to fill in and that's what you're going to hand in as your lab report so it's really hard to forget to do any part of it because they're all there okay it's not like you have oh, which part goes next it's all there okay all you have to do is fill it in so what i'm going to go over is what's the expectation for each part are you with me there okay so we start out with a problem that's got to be stated as a question in your own words so on the on the template, this will be blank. On the lab sheet that I give you, which is just a PDF document, there will be a problem, but it won't be in the form of a question. So you'll have to reword it like it's Jeopardy. Okay? Put it in the form of a question in your own words. Okay, so let's say a very simple experiment we might do would be, what is the effect of light on plant growth? Duh. But that's, that's, we're just going to simplify here. That's what we're going to say this experiment is about. Right? So that would be our problem. We're going to investigate that. We're going to figure out what is the effect of light on plant growth. Once I have that problem, then I have to design a controlled experiment to test it. In the design part is where I need to identify and explain my variables. Right? There's a manipulated variable, A, one manipulated variable. Responding variables, sometimes there's only one, but sometimes there can be many responding variables. Um, and then there are controlled variables, and you have to list three controlled variables. Right? There's often more than that, but you have to list and explain three. Okay? Now here's the part everyone forgets. Explain. You can't just write, the manipulated variable is light. Why? How? Okay, you've got to explain to me, why is light the manipulated variable? How are you manipulating it? These are all important details. Everyone follow? Okay, so if you only write, uh, like the, the design portion of your lab report is out of five marks. If you just write light growth stuff, you're going to, well, you obviously you would write more than stuff, but okay, uh, you're going to get like one or two out of five. Okay, you have to identify and explain. Even if you identify them correctly, if you don't explain them, the best you can hope for is two out of five. And the explanation part is really, really important. Okay, so in our design, we're going to identify the manipulated variable, the responding variable or variables, and three controlled variables and explain. So this is where I have to think up, how am I going to test the effect of light on plant growth? Okay. So obviously the thing that I'm manipulating, the thing that I'm testing, is light. Now I have to be more specific than light. Is it what kind of light, how much light, okay, what color, right? I have, to, I have to decide what about light am I manipulating. So in this experiment, okay, I'm going to say that the manipulated variable, okay, obviously in 
in all experiments. It's the part of the experiment that's changed on purpose by the experiment. In other words, what's being tested, right? If I'm uh, testing the effect of, um, you know, plexiglass thickness on bullet penetration, then the manipulated variable will be the thickness of the plexiglass. You know, maybe I'm designing security windows for banks or something like that. Okay? Um, so whatever it is that I'm changing or testing is the manipulated variable. In this experiment about plant growth, okay, the manipulated variable is the amount of light given to plants because um, all subjects will receive different amounts of light and light powers photosynthesis. Right? So I'm saying, I understand the role of light in plant growth, but I want to confirm that and here's what I'm testing about it. So the amount of light would be like how many hours a day the plant gets. Everybody follow me there? So I identified it's light, it's the amount of light, it's here's why. Okay, so when we are explaining our variable, okay, we have to put in how it's being manipulated, why it's being manipulated. Okay, the why is right here. Light powers photosynthesis. Okay, or at least that's the premise I'm working on. The responding variable is generally the thing that you are observing or measuring or both. Okay? For this experiment, a very general way to put that would be plant growth. That's very general. How do we measure plant growth? Time. What's that? Time. Okay, uh, I might measure it over the course of time, but how do I measure the literal growth of the plant? Stick with a little, a little ruler in there. Okay, I could use a ruler, but not all plants grow the same, right? Like, I could plant two identical tomato seeds in two pots, put them side by side, and the plants aren't going to look the same. Even if they're genetically identical, plants have this tendency to kind of adapt to their environment and their shape is not, their final shape is not genetically predetermined like ours is. So, you know, height might be one way to measure it, but I might also want to measure maybe the mass of the whole apparatus. Okay? As a plant grows, it's going to get heavier because it's going to take carbon dioxide out of the air, turn it into you know, sugars and grow. So I could do that. Um, I could maybe count the number of leaves. Or maybe I'm going to do something qualitative. Those were all quantitative measures. So I'm actually physically measuring or counting something, but I could just take pictures of the plants too, right? And just compare them before and after and during and whatever. Okay? There's lots of different ways I could measure the growth of a plant, and this is probably the place where I should say that, okay? So the responding variable is whatever changes as a result of the manipulations made by the experimenter. So in this case, the growth of the plants, because plants getting more light, will have more energy for growth. I would say that's probably not specific enough. I would say as measured by, okay? Or the indicator of growth will be height, weight, whatever, okay? Whatever it is you're gonna use as your measure. Okay, everyone following along so far? Okay, then three controlled variables. Now remember, your controlled variables are the things that are going to stay the same for every plant in your experiment, or for, in your experiment, they're the things that could affect your, your responding variable if they weren't controlled. So, I only want to know what effect change or amount of light has on plant growth. Are there other things that can affect the growth of a plant? Yes. Yes, how much water it gets, the temperature of the room it's in. Okay, the uh, location even within the room could determine that, right? So I need to make sure that all of these other variables that could affect the growth of a plant are kept the same for every plant. So one of the controlled variables, amount of water. Every plant will get X many milliliters of water per day, okay? The soil the plant grows in. All plants will receive, this, will receive the same bagged potting soil purchased wherever. Okay, um, and then temperature. All plants will be in a room where the temperature is controlled and will remain at 21 degrees Celsius throughout the experiment. Right? Now I've said these are three things that can affect my responding variable, i.e. the growth of the plant, and how I'm going to control them. Right? That has to be in your explanation. This is a controlled variable. It's being controlled for this reason. It's being controlled this way. Okay. Every controlled variable has to have that listed. So you have to think about your experiment when you're identifying these controlled variables. Whenever there's error in an experiment, it's because somebody missed a controlled variable. 
Okay? There was something out there that could affect their, their responding variable and they didn't realize it. All right, so uh, controlled variables are the other factors that could affect the outcome of the experiment if left unchecked. All right, so for my plant experiment, same species of plant. Obviously, if I'm comparing, if I'm doing an experiment on the effect of light on plant growth, I'm not comparing an oak tree, a carrot, and a bean plant. Okay, it's hardly a fair comparison. They grow at different rates. Okay, I would have to use the same species of plant. All right, same amount of water. Obviously, water is something that helps plants grow. Okay, so it says same amount of water because water is an important factor in plant growth. So each plant needs the same amount so it can't affect the growth rate of the plants. Same soil because plants get nutrients from soil and different soils hold water differently. Keeping them the same ensures that it cannot affect the experiment. Same temperature. Plants typically slow their growth in extreme heat or cold. Choosing an effective temperature for all plants ensures it does not affect the experiment. So I've said these things can affect the growth of a plant. Here's how I'm controlling. All right. What I don't want to see is here's the controlled variables. I'm keeping them all the same because they can affect the experiment. While that might be true, that's pretty darn lazy. Okay. You have to explain each one because each one affects the experiment differently. Okay. Yes, obviously they affect the experiment, but they each have a different effect. All right, questions on the design part? So like for those examples, that would be kind of what you want to see? That's what I would want to see from you, yeah. Okay. So you're, you know, we're saying two or three lines is going to identify and explain. We're not looking in, like, in detail, this many milliliters or whatever. That's for the procedure, okay? That goes in the procedure. Very rarely, only on the first experiment, in fact, do you have to design the experiment, like the actual procedure? All the other ones, the procedure is already laid out for you. Right? So all you have to do is nothing. It'll be right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then after that, you have your hypothesis. So your hypothesis is not a guess. It is not an educated guess. I know people tell you that, but it's not about guessing. Okay. A hypothesis is a statement. It says, here is the relationship between the responding and manipulated variables. This experiment is going to be done. This is going to be the result of the experiment. Okay, so basically you're saying, um, you know, if, if the relationship goes like this, and an experiment like this is run, then the data will be this. So you're making a prediction. Okay? You're not guessing. You're saying, here's what the relationship is. is. Here's how I'm going to test it, and here's the results I'll get if I'm right. Okay? In a hypothesis, you have to set yourself up to be right or wrong. Right? It's not like politics. You can't sit on the fence and waffle from side to side. You have to say, here's the relationship. This is how it is. And if you're wrong, you own that in the, in the conclusion. Okay? And you say, the hypothesis was not supported by the data, Further study is required. Fine. Okay? That's how science works. Nobody blames people for being wrong. Okay? It's how we learn. Okay? Politics is different, obviously, because you get blamed for everything all the time. Okay? But in science, you're going to be wrong. Most hypotheses are wrong. Now, in Science 10, we simplify things a lot. You get to be right a lot more often. Okay? But in real science, when people are actually doing research, their hypotheses are unsupported a lot or partially supported, and then they modify them and they do another experiment. Okay? This is the process by which like, um, big, big pharma, okay? how they come up with new medications, how they come up with vaccines, all that kind of stuff, that's the testing part of it. Okay? Here's the hypothesis, we test it, all right, this data is not very good, let's modify this and try it again. Okay? That's the process. Okay, so for our hypothesis, a hypothesis always contains these three words, if and then. If this is true and an experiment like this is run, then the results will be this, okay? A hypothesis is an if and then statement. All right, what I do not want to see for a hypothesis is, um, I think this will happen. Well, body dog. That's nice. That's not a hypothesis. Okay? 
That's a guess, okay? This is not about guessing, okay? This has to say, if this is true and this is done, then the results will look like this. All right, so uh, it's an if, and, and then statement that communicates what the relationship between your manipulated and responding variable is thought to be. That's the if part. Briefly describes the experiment. That's the and part. Okay, briefly, remember this isn't your procedure, okay, you're just saying here's kind of what this is going to look like. And then outlines the expected results. That's the then part, that's kind of your prediction part. Okay, so for our light experiment, it might look like this, and this is a bit simplistic, but if plants require light for growth, and five identical plants are given different amounts of light, then the plants that receive the most light will show the most growth. Right? So I said the relationship is more light equals more growth. Here's how I'm going to test it. Plants are getting different amount, different plants are getting different amounts of light. My predicted results, plants that get the most light are going to grow the most. Okay? That's how a hypothesis works. It always contains if and then. Questions there. In a hypothesis, we generally try to avoid the use of I, us, or we. Right? If I am right, and but I don't want to hear like you shouldn't use I, we, or us. It makes it difficult to replicate the experiment because now you have become part of it. Okay? And you would need to be there anytime somebody replicates your data. That's not what we want. If, okay, if you look at this one here, okay, the one that we had up here, um, if plants require light for growth and five identical plants are given different amounts of light, then the plants that receive the most light will show the most growth. It doesn't say anything about me, us, them, they, or anyone else. It just talks about the plants and the experiment and the expected results. That's one people struggle with. Everybody wants to talk about what they're going to do. That's not what we want to do. All right, for the procedure, it is going to be a detailed, step-by-step -step set of explicit, and I don't mean contains four-letter words, okay? Explicit means very, very clear and leaves no doubt, okay? Set of directions for preparing and performing the experiment. So for the lab we're going to do next week, uh, you are going to design the, the procedure, but we're going to walk through that together. It won't be that hard. Okay. The rest of the time, it's set up so that you'll follow it. I'll already have it done. Now, what I mean here by explicit directions, your directions have to be so specific that the dumbest person you know could follow them and not screw it up. Don't look at who you think the dumbest <laughs> person you know is. That's not nice. Okay? What I'm saying is you have to make it idiot-proof. Right? If you allow people to think, this sounds terrible, if you allow people to think for themselves, they won't do what you want. That sounds really controlling, but it's true. Okay? In an experiment, if you want them to replicate your experiment, you have to tell them exactly what you did. Okay? Make it so that you know, a five-year-old could follow the directions. It's like a cookbook. Okay? Mix these two things together, then put this in there then do this. It has to be step by step. It's not a paragraph. I see people do that. When they write procedures, they write this paragraph with no numbers in it. And so I, like, I do the first sentence and I turn away and I do that. And then I come back, where was I? Right? You get confused. You get lost. Step one. I was on step one. I did step one. Now I come back. I look at step two. I don't have to find where I was. All right? It's got to be a step by step set of very clear instructions to the point where you're even telling them here's what to look for here's what observations to make here's what to record and how to record it okay boss them around that's what the procedure is for okay once you have your procedure that should yield some observations and those can take a whole variety of forms they can be a chart where you've got some measured values. They can be graphs, including measured values. Okay? Any other data, including anecdotal notes acquired during the experiment. If you were uh, performing an experiment on, you know, like something to do with, let's say, post-traumatic stress disorder, you're not really going to measure anything about the people you're studying. 
but you are going to record anecdotal notes. Like you could say, you know, subject A, um, you know, experienced night terrors uh, three times per week and uh, was found to often be sleep deprived and had trouble remembering uh, simple things, right? So that's not something you measured. It's observations that you made and you wrote them down, okay? They're just as valid as if I go out and measure how far an object travels in a set, set amount of time. One's a quantitative measurement and the other's a qualitative observation, okay? But they're equally valid. All right, with that idea. Okay. They can sometimes even be pictures. Okay? Now, with, you know, with being able to take pictures of things very easily with our phones, we're seeing lots more use of visual type of uh, data acquisition in experiments. Okay? Taking pictures of a plant every day for three months while it grows. Right? Get like a stop motion thing kind of put together uh, over the course of time, stuff like that. All right. Once you have your observations, then you have to analyze them. Right? So you might be performing some calculations, you might be grouping things together for similarities, making comparisons. For the most part, for you guys, there's going to be some analysis questions that you'll have to answer. Okay? And that's how your analysis will be done generally in a laboratory. Okay? Uh, and you need to have detailed explanatory answers. Yes and no are not analysis answers. Okay? After the analysis will come your conclusion. In your conclusion, you restate your hypothesis. Make this easy on yourself. Copy and paste it from the top. Okay? You don't have to rewrite it, just copy and paste it. Then you look at your analysis, your data, and you explain, can this be accepted? Is this hypothesis supported by my data? So let's say in our experiment with the plants, okay? let's say it went like this. I had one plant that was getting no light at all. I would call that my control group. It tells me what happens if a plant gets no light. I need to know that it's going to die. That's fine. Okay? Plant gets no light. Plant gets four hours of light. Plant gets eight hours of light, 12, 16, 20, and 24. Right? So it goes up by four every single time. Right? So I've got all these different plants. And over the course of the experiment, I find that um, the plant that got zero died. The plant that got 24 hours of light died. The plant that got 20 hours of light was stunted. Okay? The plant that got four hours of light was stunted. Okay? The plant that got eight, the plants that got eight through 16 generally did pretty well. The plant that got 12 did the best. It showed the most growth. Okay, there's my data. My analysis says that sunlight is not a more is better situation. Very little is bad. A whole lot is bad. Okay? Those plants die. That's my analysis. Does that support my hypothesis? It does not. My hypothesis said that plants that get the most light will show the most growth. The most light plant died. Okay? Plants are not meant to get 24 hours of light a day. Okay? At least not most of them. Okay? They have this photo period. They're supposed to get a certain amount of light and then get a little rest because that's the environment they evolved in. Okay? The earth spins around on this axis, right? Okay. Okay. Um, so that's what we're supposed to, that's the data that, that I got. My hypothesis is not supported. So in my conclusion, okay, I would say, as it was found that plants receiving small amounts of light and very large amounts of light showed little growth, it can be con concluded that plants require certain amounts of light and darkness to be healthy. Therefore, the hypothesis is rejected. Okay? Are you going to lose marks if at the end of an experiment you have to say in your conclusion that your hypothesis is not supported? No. no. Absolutely not. You would lose marks if your data didn't support the hypothesis and you said, I was right. First off, you did lose marks if you just said, I was right. That's not a conclusion. Okay? Uh, you need to explain. Okay? I restate my hypothesis, and then I say, here's what I saw, here's why it doesn't support my hypothesis. Okay? So your conclusion is going to be a few lines long, okay? probably twice the length of your hypothesis because, well, part of it is your hypothesis, and then the other part is whether it's supported or not. And then finally, at the very end, you're going to identify two sources of error within the experiment okay, and suggest improvements. Places to look for.
for sources of error are your controlled variables. Okay? One of my controlled variables in this experiment was temperature. But light often affects temperature. So while I had all the plants in the same room, they each had a lamp over them okay, with a timer on it. And some of them, those lamps were on for longer. And it was noted that there were you know, small changes in temperature for the plants receiving higher amounts of light. Okay? Probably not enough to affect the experiment, but that's unknown. Okay? So I can say as a source of error, it was found that the temperature did vary slightly for the plants receiving the most amount of light. Okay? Everyone follow me on that? How would I fix that in the future? I would have individually temperature controlled containers for the plants. Right? That way the light could, you know, I could have like an air conditioner or something like that, each single one, and make sure that that temperature stayed at exactly 21 and a half degrees, regardless of how much light they have. Right? Uh, another one could be that um, some seeds uh, germinated more slowly than others. Okay? Uh, and so some plants may not have been as vigorous as other ones. Uh, you know, it, we did our best to make sure that the plants were all the same, but um, maybe some of these plants were just not a really good specimen. Okay? Is that a source of error? Yes. Okay, how do I fix that in the future? I have larger sample sizes. Instead of just having one plant getting four hours of light, I have four plants that get four hours of light. Four plants that get eight hours. Just in case I get one dud. Because that can happen. Okay? I can get one plant that's a dud. So I've said, here were some things I noticed. They could, they could have contributed this type of error. Here's how I fixed it, or how I would fix it in the future. All right, everybody with me there? I always make sure that there are going to be errors in your experiments so that you can find them for this part of the experiment. Okay? So you're not going to hurt my feelings if you say this was a source of error. Okay? I'm putting them in there on purpose. Okay? If you say this experiment went great, there were no errors, you're wrong. Okay? No experiment goes great. Okay? There's always errors. Questions on any of that? Okay. So tomorrow, because um, it's Friday, short class tomorrow, we're going to quickly go over um, properties of compounds, which is a short lesson, but that's going to be really important for our lab design that we're going to start on Monday. Okay? Periodically, we're going to come back to doing some naming practice, right? but um, you know, generally, we're not going to have a whole lot more time for that. Okay.